Okay, so this is one of my absolute favorite things, especially when I'm traveling. So I usually eat um, maybe one serving of canned tuna per week. I know there's a lot of um, curiosity around exactly how much tuna you can eat per week, but these little envelope things I think are brilliant because you can literally tear it open and eat it. It's great for travel. It's great for taking food on the go, like uh, if you eat from your office at lunchtime. So I really love these. So here's the deal. Chunk light tuna is the one that has the least amount of mercury, but I also just don't like it very much. I do tend to like albacore tuna so the theory is that there's more mercury in the albacore um, but if that's what you like and that's what you'll eat I say go for it and just keep it to about once a week or less I know the jury is still out on the whole gluten-free thing. I do believe that most people will feel better when they avoid gluten or at least keep it to a minimum. Um, I really try to avoid gluten as much as I can because I see a discernible difference. So when it comes to pasta, that presents a unique challenge, trying to find one that is gluten-free. Um, there are a lot of brown rice pastas that are decent. I just found this one that I really like. Um, Ancient or Harvest is the brand, and it's literally, all it is is organic corn flour and organic quinoa flour. Genius, because both of them are organic and it's just two ingredients and that's it. So I have not tasted this, but I think this would be an amazing product to try if you'd like to have a gluten-free pasta. So something I'm a big fan of is tortillas. And probably in your grocery store, like many, you're gonna have a section of tortillas that are not refrigerated. Um, and I wanna use it as an example. There was a time many years ago where I just loved the whole idea of a low carb tortilla, because I love tortillas. And it's a great alternative to bread. So um, I would eat these on a regular basis. And lo and behold, I was constipated a whole lot. <laughs> um, part of it is because they put so many ingredients in this to make it taste good and to give it texture, to take the carbs out. Out. This is a carb product. You can't take the carbs out of it. So basically what they're doing is they're putting in cellulose fiber. They're putting in a bunch of crazy stuff. I can't, oh my gosh, like so much crazy stuff, including wheat gluten, which is what constipates me. Hello. Canola oil, which is not great for you. Um, there is sugar, wheat protein on top of the wheat gluten. I mean, there's just so many ingredients in here that just don't really even make sense. So I'm a bigger fan of finding a different kind of tortillas. No, no, no! <laughs> the almond milk section. <laughs> okay, so almond milk is all the rage. Why? Because a cup of it is only 40 calories if you get the unsweetened kind. So, okay. Okay, so this is my favorite brand, Califia Farms Almond Milk. The only problem is this one's not, um, this one's not unsweetened. This is the regular one. The unsweetened one is amazing. 40 calories for an entire eight ounce cup. Genius. So the thing about Califia Farms, it is a little spendier. So if you don't want to spend the spendy, another brand that is great is Almond Breeze. This was the, my kind of original go-to for the longest time. Again, make sure you get the unsweetened. Even if it's sweetened and it's got some sugar in it, it's not too bad, but the thing is you just don't need sugar in your almond milk. The other thing that you don't really need is you don't really need organic almond milk. Um, if I've got some extra money and I'm really feeling like I want to go super clean and organic, I'll get it. But almonds are one of those foods that you don't have to have organic. So if you don't want to spend the extra money on organic, this is the place where you can just stay with a regular, old, traditional, good, old almond. So I do use almond milk a lot of times um, in my smoothies or when I'm cooking, but I'm also a cow's milk drinker. I really like milk. Um, here's a cool thing about milk. A lot of people think that milk is actually a protein. Unfortunately, it's not. So here's the deal. If you're gonna choose milk, I am actually a big fan of choosing 1% or 2% milk because a little bit of that fat is good for you. Also, the three different kinds of milk, non-fat, 1%, 2%, or full fat, which is 4%, really all are, end up being in different macronutrient categories. So um, whole milk, 1% and 2% milk, actually the greatest macronutrient is fat. 
these should be considered a fat, not a protein. And then you want to know what's even crazier? Fat-free milk, which is what most people drink, is actually considered a carbohydrate. It's not a protein. It's a carbohydrate. There are 13 grams of carbohydrate and nine grams of protein in here. That means it's way more of a carbohydrate. So yes, it has protein in it. It includes protein, but it's technically considered a carbohydrate. How about that?